بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome everyone to another episode talking about the noble life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in knowledge May He subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us in this dunya and in the akhirah May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that which is good in this life and that which is good in the hereafter and save us from the torment of the, the hellfire May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us safety and security. We ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant his complete shifa and quick recovery to our brothers and sisters who are suffering from any kind of sickness. Allahumma ameen. Uh, today we have seerah. And uh, last week we talked about some of the major incidents that happen before the coming of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam such as for example the rediscovery of Zamzam water by Abdul Muttalib the grandfather of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we also talked about the incident of the elephant and um, the story of Abu Raha al-Habashi and how Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala defended his house we talked about also that we started the birth of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the noble lineage of the prophet peace be upon him allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed him with the most noble lineage he sallallahu alaihi wasallam clearly said in a hadith inna allah astafa ismail min walad ibrahim allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose ismail from the descendants of Ibrahim alayhi salam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Kinana from the children of Ismail and then he subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Quraysh the tribe of Quraysh from Kinana and then it chose the children of Banu Hashim from Quraysh and then it chose me he sallallahu alayhi wasallam from Banu Hashim no? subhanallah and we mentioned that the marriage of also Abdullah the Prophet's father to Aminah bin Wahb, the daughter of the chief of Banu Zahra also both of them from uh, from Quraysh but Banu Zahra is one of the sub-tribes of, of Quraysh and we mentioned that within a week of marriage within a week just he spent a week with his wife and then he had gone to Asham or Syria for a business trip and subhanallah, death overtook him and never to be seen again. Uh, today, inshallah ta'ala, will continue subhanallah with the, the early childhood of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once again, it's something to mention that we mentioned that all the scholars of Islam agreed that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born on a Monday. And then many scholars also, not all of them, many scholars maintain that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born after 12 nights had passed from the month of Rabi'ul Awwal. After 12 nights had passed from the month of Rabi'ul Awwal and in the year of the elephant, this we all know this, in the house of Abu Talib, the Prophet's uncle, in the mountain pass of Banu Hashim. So the year of the elephant, this is all scholars agreed that the Prophet was born on a Monday in the year of the elephant in the house of uh, Abu Talib in the mountain pass of um, uh, Banu Hashim. However, some scholars or many of them maintain that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born on the 12th of Rabi'ul Awwal. But this is not the only opinion. However, the 12th of Rabi' al-Awwal has be, became so popular and that's why many people celebrate the, uh, the, the birthday of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But this is actually not agreed upon. Some scholars said 
He was born in the 8th of Rabi'ul al Awal, other in the 2nd, 18th, and 10th. But subhanAllah, because most of the writers of the seerah took it from um, Ibn Ishaq, uh, ta'ala, so that's why this date, the 12th of Rabi'ul al Awal, became so uh, popular. Actually, if you look at it, that, um, the first time the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was celebrated as a celebrated event, right? The authority, it shows the 12th of Rabi'ul Awal. So the first recorded event, the first recorded event of people celebrating the birth of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was 570 Hijrah meaning almost 600 years after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is actually, uh, even celebrating birthdays and stuff like that were not the, 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 the customs of the people at that time. So the first, subhanAllah, celebrated or the first recorded event of people celebrating that was almost 600 years after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sahaba actually never practiced this before. However, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was asked about why you fast Mondays, he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, this was the day I was born and the day revelation started. But again, inshallah, it doesn't really matter, but we just wanted inshallah ta'ala uh, to clarify this. Um, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born again, the Prophet, peace be upon him, did not see his father. And um, it, it was the, uh, at that time the customs of the elite people. Once the, the child is born, they actually give them away. Give them away to be raised in the desert. Uh, for a number of reasons, SubhanAllah. Uh, we know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had a number of what nurses. So for example, one of them is Ummu Ayman Baraka Al-Habashiyya radiyallahu anha. And Ummu Ayman actually died after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Ummu Ayman was a maid that belonged to his father, Abdullah. Right? And then later on, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam married her to Zayd ibn Haritha, so her name Ummu Ayman Baraka, and she was one of the wet nurses of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the first actually woman to breastfeed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was Thuwayba. Thuwayba was the female slave of Abu Lahab, his uncle. So she was the first woman to breastfeed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. After Ummu Ayman, and Thuwayba, we know the most famous one is Halima as Saadiya from the tribe of Banu Sa'd bin Bakr. And even Subhanallah, Halima as Saadiya herself narrated the story and how she uh, chose the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's very interesting, very, very interesting, Subhanallah. Um, Halima said she went um, among a group of women from Banu Sa'd. Bin Bakr, this one of, was one of the tribes. Uh, all of them went to, uh, to get some infants from Mecca. Um, all of them, right at that time. And again, this was um, the common practice for women who lived in the city to give their infants for a while to women who lived in the desert. Again, for a number of reasons, which is very important. Uh, the first reason is that um, uh, children who, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, raised in the desert were at a safe distance from the disease that commonly afflicted city dwelling people. One more time, the children or the infants who were raised in the desert were far or at a, were at a safe distance right, from the, from the disease that commonly afflicted the city dwelling people. This is number one, because we all know that the atmosphere even of the, 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 the village is much, much better than the city. Also, subhanAllah, in the, in the desert, the child would grow um, strong and also independent, strong mentally 
and physically. This is something that is very important. And also they would learn the pure Arabic, right? So they avoid speaking the, the slang that is often spoken in the, in the city. And subhanAllah, it depends. Sometimes they used to take the children for a couple of months and bring them back to their parents. Or for a couple of years, depends on the child. Also at the same time, the child will be away from his parents. The child will be away from his relatives. That means away from being spoiled. Because even if the father or the mother um, are strict with their, with their um, child, you will find uncles, aunts, uh, cousins, relatives, subhanAllah, would, would they call pamper him and spoil him and take care of him. So for this reason, this was the, the custom and the tradition of the elite people at that time to give their children away from them, especially in the first couple of years. And that happened with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And subhanAllah, we all know that Halima Sa'diyah herself said she witnessed many, many, many blessings. She witnessed many, many blessings, subhanAllah. She said that I went to Mecca uh, with her husband, Al Haris ibn Abdul Uzza, and her son. Uh, it was a year of drought. And she said, By Allah, my son even could not sleep the entire night due to hunger. We're hoping for rain. It was a year of drought. And she had a, a female donkey and a camel. And the, 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 the female donkey actually was afflicted with bloody wounds because of the long journey from the desert to the city uh, of Mecca. And she said, by Allah, even the camel would not give forth even a drop of milk. And when we arrived in Mecca, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was uh, presented to each and every one of us. A group of women went together from the tribe of Banu Sa'ad. And again, she said the Prophet, peace be upon him, was presented to each and every one of us. And none of us, none of us liked to take him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because he was an orphan. And it is the father who is um, so generous and kind. And how much can we expect from his mother, uncle, or grandfather? So... And she said, each one of my female companions, each one of them took an infant, except me. And I was left with no choice. I was left with no choice but to take the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I was so embarrassed to go back or to return with them with empty handed. So I told my husband, let's take uh, this son from the children of Abdul Muttalib. Uh, perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will benefit us through him. And he said, you're right. And we took him. And subhanAllah, again, she witnessed many, many, many blessings. Many, many blessings. And then to the point that even after the first two years, uh, Halima Sa'diyah and her husband, Al Harith ibn Abdul Uzza insisted and persisted to go back to Mecca and ask Amina, the Prophet's mother, to extend the contract to keep him for more time. And they said, By Allah, we will try to keep him as much as we can because of the blessings with the passing of each day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increased them in goodness. With the passing of every day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increased them in goodness. So the, within the first two years, what happens is that maybe they can take the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for a couple of days, okay, to see his mother, and then they go back to pick him up. But most of the time, probably 99.99% of the time, with his uh, uh, breastfeeding mother and father. Two years had passed and Halima said, we want to keep him. So he went to Amina in Mecca and they said, we want him more. And they begged her. And subhanAllah, Amina gave them the permission to keep him for more time. And it was during the second phase that the famous incident of 
cleansing the heart of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam took place. So he was. It, it, some scholars said it happens at the age of three years. Some of them said it happens at the age of four years. But for sure, no more than four years. But at the second, so not not in the first two years, probably in the third or the fourth year. And it has been reported that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was playing with his brothers and sisters, and then behind the house. And then subhanallah, all of a sudden, two men wearing white garments came. They made him sallallahu alayhi wa lie down and then they split open his chest. And this, by the way, happened in front of who? In front of his brothers and sisters. So they raced towards their mother. And they said, our brother from Quraysh, Muhammad, has been killed. So Halima radiallahu anha and her husband, subhanAllah, raced towards the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they found him standing. And the, the color of his face is changed. They embraced him and they asked him, what is the matter with you? And he said, two men came and made me lie down and they, they opened my chest and they took that was by the way Jibreel alayhi salam so he extracted his heart took his heart out and then he washed it right he washed it in a basin or in a cup made of gold and then he put it back and he said this is the portion of shaitan in you this is the portion of shaitan in you. And he, subhanallah, you can say that was the first open heart surgery that was done by Jibreel to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the point that Anas radiyallahu an, Anas bin Malik radiyallahu an said, I used to see the marks of that stitching on the chest of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Again, this is very important. He said, I used to see the marks of that stitching on the chest of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Meaning Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala left like that line. Okay, to show that some, something physical happened to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at a young age. And this is, by the way, was one of the signs of his prophethood Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this incident was repeated again probably 45 years later in the journey of Al-Isra wal miraj It happened again with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So what happened is that Jibreel Alayhi Salam removed a blood clot from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then washed his heart with zamzam water in a golden cup and then he put it back and said, this is the portion of shaitan in you. And this is, by the way, benefited the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, benefited him greatly, because we all know that even the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, at a young age, from the very beginning, even before receiving any revelation, he never bowed down to an idol, or committed a major sin. Even though polytheism and evil deeds were practiced on a widespread scale among the people of Quraysh. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never ever committed a major sin. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never bowed down to an idol. Never Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam practiced shirk even before receiving any revelation from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And we know that from the, the religious status of the people at his time, we discussed that the Kaaba was surrounded with more than 360 idols. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected him, took care of him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took care of him. So Allah, number, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided him. There are two things. Allah provided him with the care of his grandfather and with the care of his uncle Abu Talib to facilitate the material welfare of the Prophet. 
but for the spiritual welfare and also the uh, what they call the spiritual welfare of the Prophet وسلم, this was taken care of by who? by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the removal of the blood clot purified the Prophet وسلم, from the immorality foolish, uh, foolishness from the recklessness of youth and this incident also shows the, us the degree to which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected the Prophet وسلم, and prevented shaitan from having any influence over him whatsoever sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this incident happened at the age of three or four. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did talk about it in the Quran when he says, Alam nashrah laka sadrak wa wada'na anka wizrak alladhi anqada dhahrak so when this happened and uh, um, uh, Halima and her husband raced towards the Prophet ﷺ, embraced him and said, what is the matter with you? And he told them that two people came and made me lie down and open my stomach or my chest and washed something and put it back. They became so worried and concerned to the point that her, her husband said, our son has been afflicted with something, maybe with madness or something like that. So they decided to take him back to his mother. And they took him back to Amina um, bin Tuwam, the Prophet's uh, blood mother. And she was shocked. She said, what made you bring him before time when, when you guys were begging me to keep him? And they said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed an end of, um, uh, to his, or for his breastfeeding. And we are happy with him, meaning in terms of his health and this and that. And she said, no, by Allah, something happened with my son. And Halima said she did not leave us until we told her exactly what happened with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Interesting that uh, Amina really was not surprised. As a matter of fact, she told them, even she talked about her experience when she was pregnant with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I did talk about the, when the Prophet ﷺ was asked about the beginning of his affair, he said, I, I am the supplication of my father Ibrahim ﷺ, the glad tongues of my brother Isa. And my mother saw, had a dream that light came out of her, light that illuminated the castles of Asham and how the, her pregnancy was so light and this and that. So she knew that her son, was going to have a great status in the future. What kind of status, what kind of position, Allah knows best. But she knew that this son of mine will have a, something amazing or something great in the future. And then Halima radiallahu anha said, she took her son and me and, I, and my husband went back to our tribe, Banu Bakr bin Sa'd. After that, uh, uh, Amina uh, decided to go and um, visit her relatives in Al Medina, and then she got sick over there and she died when the Prophet was six years old. Right? So he did not see his father, and then his mother died at the, when he was six years old, and then Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of the Prophet, وسلم, became his guardian became the caretaker of the Prophet. Abdul Muttalib loved him a great deal to the point that even he preferred him to his own sons. You know, Abdul Muttalib was a great man, was the chieftain of Quraysh, and he had a place right next to the Kaaba to just discuss the affairs of Quraysh. No one, none of his sons dared even to sit on his carpet. This is equal to like, like a king's throne. No one, no one can sit. But he allowed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to sit on it. Also, Abdul Muttalib, many couple of them said, this son of mine will have a great future. What kind of mission or that? Nobody knows. But subhanallah, again, the upbringing of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was completely different. So he, Abdul Muttalib loved him a great deal. And then, at the age of eight, when the Prophet ﷺ was eight years old, Abdul Muttalib passed away. And before his death, he advised his son, Abu Talib, the Prophet's uncle, to take care of the Prophet ﷺ. And Abu Talib became the guardian and the caretaker of 
Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is subhanallah, very important. You can see at a young age, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam faced many things, right? Many calamities. Being orphaned for the third time from his father to his mother, right? To his uncle. And for this reason, this made him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? So sensitive to the pains of others. Something very important. Made him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam very sensitive to the pains of others. Because sadness purifies the soul from hardness, from arrogance, from harshness. It increases it in politeness and in humbleness. For this reason, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ana wa kafiru yatimi kahataini fil jannah. Me and the one who takes care of an orphan will be like this in paradise. Will be like this in paradise. So any orphan can find comfort and consolation in the early history of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described in that, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have not sent you, but as a mercy to all that exists, to al-alameen, to everybody. Can you imagine that? Subhanallah, you don't see your father, and then at the age of six, you lose your mother, and then at the age of eight, you lose your grandfather, and then after that, you lose your uncle, and then your wife, and then your sons and daughters, and then your loved ones. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam greatly. He had a tough time. This is very important for us. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانْ Indeed, in the Prophet of Allah, you have the best example. Indeed, in the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you have the best example. Yeah, it's very important. So anything that you face in life, you just remember the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You will not find anybody on the face of this earth. I'm, I'm sure anybody on the face of this earth who lost during his lifetime, lost his, didn't see his father and then lost his mother when he was six, and then his grandfather when he was eight, and then all of his sons and daughters except one, and then his wife, and then his uncle, and then he was expelled from his city. And so subhanAllah, that's why when we face something, what happens? We find comfort. We find consolation in the early history of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's the best example. He is the best example. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ So now we talked very important that we talked about the major incidents that happened before the coming of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We talked about the lineage of the Prophet, the wet nurses of the Prophet, peace be upon him, the incident of Halimah radiyallahu anha. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it chose for him to be an orphan, from the very beginning, this is very important. And then insha'Allah ta'ala, we will talk about just the, still the early childhood of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the incident that happened when his uncle took him um, uh, for a business trip. Very beautiful something that happened when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, was I think 11 or 12 years old. And then how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam participated in certain things before receiving revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send his peace and blessings upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us his um, a company in Jannah. Allahumma ameen. We ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase in, this, in knowledge. Barakallahu feekum. Wa jazakumullahu khayra. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.